Okay, let's introduce Mendel, our wonderful, you can call him a priest. Yeah, monk. Yeah, he's a monk, I think, not a priest. So what did he do? Observe the pea plant, nothing else. He was a monk. Yeah, he had plenty of time. He did it. Good for us. <laughs> all right. We inherited all the uh, principles from him. And he was lucky, basically. See, Mendel was really lucky. Uh, pea plants were obeying single, uh, single gene inheritance patterns. So... Uh, later on, we appreciated that many genes don't obey Mendel's laws. We have something called atypical inheritance, multifactorial inheritance, etc. So when he did it, he thought that all the genes behave in the same way, which is not the case. If he was there, if he was if he was present today, yes, we could have always told him that only some single genes obey your principles. All right, <laughs> nothing against Mendel. He's done wonderful work over past. I mean, he almost worked on the pea plants almost 30 years, 40 years to really appreciate all this okay let's see what did he talk about uh, he for, created two laws okay the first law is called as law of segregation we all know that the two coexisting alleles for a particular locus we have two alleles one from the paternal one from the maternal right so when your cells are again dividing in meiosis mainly in the germ cells in the male spermatogonia and the female zoogonia when the spermatogonia are dividing in the meiosis one what happens you see the separation of the homologous chromosome after the crossing over so that means there is segregation of common loci or common i mean alleles of the common loci the two coexisting alleles of an individual for a, each trait segregate during gamete formation so that each gamete gets only one of the two alleles right alleles again unite at random following fertilization you can see here spermatogonia you can see allele one in red allele two in green ugonia as well allele one in red allele two in green they are segregated in the sperms and the ova when they fuse what happens it's going to be again deployed two haplotypes coming closest to form the genotype and then the rest is going to happen which is nothing but formation of the zygote the second principle is law of independent assortment we talked about a particular chromosome. In a particular chromosome, there could be thousands of loci with thousands of genes. Locus 1 and locus 2 could move simultaneously together or it could be separated as well. Again, Mendel got lucky here as well. He compared two characteristics which are present on the same chromosome. So he could talk about it. If you're comparing two loci which is very close to each other or if which is very far away from each other, the characteristics are going to vary. Right? Let me show you what I'm talking. Okay, I have a chromosome here. Let me see. This is oops. So this is the chromosome. Hmm. So let's say okay, we're given the cats here again. Color of the cat and length of the tail, right? So this is one gene and this is the other gene. So when can the independent assortment take place? Because we know that the chromosomes undergo crossing over. Let's see that now. I'll draw a paternal chromosome here. So this is how a situation is. Let's say this is this is maternal and this is paternal. We all know in uh, meiosis there is crossing over, which is in the prophase one. So what happens when there's crossing over? This is what is going to happen. Let me show you that as well. There will be exchange of the fragments. See what has happened after the crossover. Is there an independent assortment? Yes or no? So this was chromosome one. I mean gene one, gene one, gene two, gene two. Now what has happened? There's a crossover. So you can see that uh, red and the green have mixed up here. And here the green and the red have mixed. Is there a true crossover here? Is there an independent assortment between these two genes? Yes or no? Yes, there is independent assortment. Very good. Okay. Now, this is what Mendel experienced. He was very smart and uh, he was lucky again for independent assortment principles. Now, let me show you some other situation. What if these two genes are very close to each other? Will there be independent assortment? If the genes are very close to each other, then there will not be independent assortment because when the crossovers take place, the genes will move en block so that you may not actually see the crossovers happening. So Mendel was again lucky. Uh, same thing is happening with the uh, cats here. The two traits were actually independently assorted. One was the length of the tail and the color of the cat, which is dominant. Can you appreciate? Can you tell me which is dominant here? Yeah, that's called the linkage analysis. Very good. Okay. Can you tell me which is dominant? Okay. Brown is dominant and the length of the tail, short tail, which is capital S and uh, brown skin, which is capital B. Very good. 
So this is called as linkage analysis. Very good. So these two, uh, the color of the skin and the length of the tail are not linked. That means they can be crossovers. So the more closer the genes, they tend to move and block. The linkage analysis will be decreased. So basically you can see that the closer the genes, the separation of the genes during crossover will not take place. There may not be independent assortment. 